Hey, I'm Kate, welcome to Pipeworks. I was a home brewer, uh, fell in love with beer just by learning that it was alive and a living beverage. I Once I realized it wasn't just macro beers that I was drinking during beer pong in college, it was very exciting. It was a culinary experience for me, uh, lots of flavors, lots of different types, styles, the history that's involved in it. It was just an interesting topic and something I kind of jumped into headfirst. Um, Got involved in Pipeworks, just kind of wandered in. It was a startup brewery, Garrett Lewis and BJ Oslin. Two friends working together just decided to open a brewery and uh, it's kind of just been growing and growing since then. I am a woman in the beer industry um, and it's uh, it's great. I've been in this industry now for about five years, a little bit more, which is crazy that it sort of feels old school now. Um, also working here is Claudia. Um, she does our she's our QC brewer. Um, so women in the beer industry are they kind of stick together and they really kind of are aware who the other women are. Uh, it's a very supportive community, at least in Chicago, which has been really great. There's definitely some you know challenges. Sometimes people underestimate you, but I think if you just keep your head down and work really hard uh, like anyone else, uh, people respect you for your craft and that's sort of the great thing about the beer industry. Right now it's a pretty male-dominated industry um, and it'd be great to see more women involved uh, on any level of the industry and I think that we're kind of moving in that direction uh, to be more inclusive, which is going to overall bring more perspectives and more ideas and palettes to the table. We were doing a lot of really experimental one-off beers, and we still do in the very beginning. There was never a plan to do a sort of flagship beer, but it kind of developed naturally, and that was Ninja vs. Unicorn, which is uh, our double IPA, very happy. It's almost five uh, pounds of hops per barrel, um, but it's mostly late edition, so very aromatic. Uh, at the time, it was... Um, kind of stood out uh, from everything else that was on the market and on the scene and um, it just kind of took off from there. Um, other than that, we've uh, continued the experimental tradition. We still do lots of one-offs, things um, where we use flavors that aren't normally maybe part of beer or what you wouldn't expect. Um, a lot of different sort of more food-based ingredients. Um, like fruits and honeys and different teas. We have one called Brown and Stirred, which is based off of a Manhattan cocktail. Um, so really uh, rye, rye heavy, almost a stupid amount of rye malt. Cherries, uh, lemon peel as well. Uh, and then we kind of use bitter roots like gentian and uh, chinchona uh, to kind of add almost like an Angostura bitters element to it. Um, we recently just released uh, four variations that came out of different barrels. It looks like a cocktail and it really tastes like it. Um, at uh, a restaurant, Longman and Eagle, they actually serve it uh, on the rocks uh, with a twist of lemon. And it, it almost looks identical. And, and we have an <laughs> another kind of out there beer is called uh, Hey Careful Man, there's a beverage here. And it's sort of based off of a white Russian cocktail. Um, so lactose, it's a stout, but it's no dark malt goes into it, so it's a blonde stout uh, with coffee, vanilla, uh, choc uh, cacao nibs. Um, kind of like a big Lebowski theme going on there. We have a pretty significant barrel program. Mike Shalau is our barrel master. I only put that in quotes because he would not like it if we called him that probably, but um, he's very good at getting the barrels, getting things that are really special. Uh, we brew two barrel, so we don't just kind of like throw anything in there. We want it to, we want to brew a beer that we think is going to complement the overall barrel characteristic. Uh, we do a lot of experimental stuff. We have a another cocktail inspired beer, a Negroni beer. Um, that we put into gin barrels. Um, so we still do sort of one-off things that are more uh, more on the less just, you know, imperial stout in bourbon barrels, but more kind of experimental and using the barrel as an ingredient instead of just a uh, overall vessel. We have three brew cats, uh, Quingston, and then we have Smoose and Gregory. Uh, actually, when we moved into this facility, there was nothing in here, and we could hear meowing from inside one of the walls. 
and a feral cat had had kittens inside the wall and then the previous tenants had not been aware, boarded it up, and being the crazy cat people that we are, we just had to break down the wall and we were pulling <laughs> kittens out of the wall. Um, and then as a brewery, we raised them. So uh, Smoose and Gregory are, were raised by the brewery, have always lived here. Um, they were actually here before us. So um, they, they're very comfortable uh, navigating this place. I'm Alex McSay, and I am the Dojo Master. Some call me the King of Fintech. I've been uh, passionate about uh, alcohol in general, just uh, the, the field. No, not that way, Jesus. Uh, but no, I got into homebrewing when I was in college. A professor uh, taught me how to do it, so I've been doing it ever since then. I used to be the beer and wine buyer for uh, a company out in Maryland, and then I was also a wine buyer, but my passion has always been, honestly, beer. So when I came to back to Chicago, which is where I'm actually from, I was lucky enough to become a driver here and get my foot in the door. So yeah, really cool place, great beer, and, and on top of it, obviously, we like zany people, we like zany ideas, we rotate our beers like crazy. It's not a kind of place where it's like, okay, we have to sell this much lager. It's, it's very much a passion project for everyone here. Honestly, it is the, the, the people. I, I came on board because I really like the brand and I enjoyed the kind of beer that we make, um, but one of the fun things is that very quickly I realized it's a family here. And I've worked for a lot of different places and it's never felt so strong of like a click with everyone loving each other, being on each other's back, like just getting together, having a lot of fun on Fridays, making sure that you work your butt off, but at the same time, you're actually, you know, making a product, having some fun. We're uh, a lot of smart people who have a strong passion for this business. Uh, one of the fun things about that is you get people who are willing to do anything for what they love to do. So a uh, very goofy, fun music being played at all times, that kind of stuff. So not a tap room, we are a wonderful bottle shop, but the spiel is we're the coolest uh, basically liquor store you've ever been to. We only sell one brand of beer, but we're nice enough to let you taste it beforehand and our merch is fantastic. Thanks for stopping by. Here at Pipeworks, you're the king. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>